Recently, this house became an all-too-familiar statistic. In full daylight hours and while the family were out, someone broke in. It happened somewhere in the country every two minutes. Now, statistics are cold and impersonal. Housebreaking isn't. Housebreaking is a personal matter between you and a complete stranger. He breaks a window, forces the door, and enters your home. Once inside, he works quickly. He's not concerned with damage, and nothing that you possess is sacrosanct. It may not even be you who discovers the break-in. In this case, Sarah, aged 16, was returning from school. Well, I came home from Manchester at half past five, and I found the front door was open. I thought, it's a bit strange. I'm sure I shut it. And I went through the front door, and I saw, I looked in the hall, and saw that everything was upside down, cupboards, you know, all the clothes were on the floor and everything. I thought, that's strange. And it suddenly hit me that, oh, we've had burglars. So I just, I didn't want to stay because I was quite frightened. So um, I ran out of the house, and I went next door, banging frantically on the door. And um, I said, I think my house has been burgled. So they came over with me, went into the kitchen, and I had a look around the house and saw the mess. And I, first of all, I just couldn't believe it, you know, shock, I just didn't know what to say. Tell me about your room, what sort of a mess have they made of that? Well, they'd um, turn the draw taken the drawers out and tipped them upside down and they'd been through, I had little boxes in my drawer full of letters and stuff, things that you, I keep. And um, they were all over the floor and everything as though been, somebody had been through them. My jewellery was scattered everywhere, my bed, the covers were thrown back. The clothes were on the floor, and it was just the mess, everything in one big heap on the floor. Do you remember being hysterical? I don't, I think it was the initial shock of it happening without my parents being with me and being alone. Um, just being by myself and feeling, you know, why does it have happened to me and, and they're not with me. Do you, have you completely recovered? Do you feel completely safe now? Um, as long as I'm with people, yes. It's just when... In this house, at night, or perhaps during the day, or not so much during the day anymore, but at night, when I can often be by myself for about an hour or so, my parents are working and I come in from a party or something, I have to come into an empty house or somebody sees the door and everything, and I don't know, I turn all the lights on. Well, after I walked into the hall, I then went into the sitting room, where I have a little display cabinet, and everything that I kept on that cabinet had been taken, apart from a few ornaments. There were some christening presents of the children, and oh, a lovely dish that my mother had given us for an engagement present. Everything had gone. I just, you know, I couldn't believe that they could take all these things. And family things. Well, family things, yes, yes, very sentimental value. And mm, yes. um, what state was the room in? The room wasn't in a bad state. That was about the only room that wasn't in a bad state. They'd just taken um, the things that were on the cabinets and the tables, um, but they hadn't disturbed anything else. Just the empty spaces? Just the empty spaces, yes. Oh, the heart was mm. Oh, it, it was a terrible feeling. But then I went into my eldest daughter's bedroom and, oh, the mess in there was just horrific. And she had a lovely chain that her grandmother had given her for her 16th birthday that had been taken you know, little, little bits and pieces then I went into our bedroom and that was the same every drawer in the bedroom had been turned upside down um, you know the thoughts of a stranger going through all your private possessions that I just wasn't there thinking about they'd taken everything what did you do physically did you have a sense of shock? It was very difficult because I didn't want to um, break down in front of my youngest daughter, who's only ten. I tried to play the whole thing down a little. And yet, at the same time, it was rather difficult to curb my own feelings. What state did you find Sarah in? She was in a terrible state. I mean, it was worse for her than it was for anybody else because she was the one who discovered the break-in in the first place. I mean, when we got back, it was several hours old. And, uh... Has she recovered? 
Well, she has recovered, but it's made a difference to her. She's become very nervous at night. Um, she goes around locking all the doors all the time, putting a chain across the front door, and she needs the lights on everywhere. Every room has to have a light on all the time. What about its effect on your younger daughter? Well, Kate, to begin with, we didn't think it made any difference to Kate. Um, she didn't really say very much. And then, I think it was the first night after the break-in, about midnight or half past twelve, she came into our bedroom and got into bed with me, and she clung to me. And every time I moved or turned over, she clutched me. And she'd obviously bottled it all up, and she felt very insecure. Um, it's almost as though there's still somebody in the house. It's this, this feeling. Again, it's difficult to describe, but it's, again, it's made her very nervous. Of course, the police had to come and set about their inquiries. So how did you feel about that sort of thing? Well, the police came back again on the same evening because they wanted to have a list of all the things that had been taken. Um, obviously, so they could circulate this list. Um, I mean, the police were very understanding and kind, and we all sat down and talked about it. Um, I think it was a little overwhelming for my youngest daughter again to see somebody in uniform sitting in our kitchen. She couldn't quite grasp the situation somehow. It's having quite a long time as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's something that will take a long time for the children to get over, well, for all of us to get over. You feel threatened? Um, well, I did to start with, yes. Um, I suppose the longer I've had to think about it, I don't feel quite the same. It's, it's just the feeling that I, I have that my house is, is not mine any longer. Too many people know about my house. There's a break-in somewhere every two minutes. Is your home secure? For free advice, Ask at your local police station for the Crime Prevention Officer.